Oh no, not Remy Raccoon doing low effort content. It can't be. But for real though, hey folks, Remy here, back at it again with that low effort content. What year is this that I'm still referencing that? <laughs> anyway, you know what time it is. It's time for an overly long Q&A video that people will skim through to find if I answer their question, then immediately back out to go rewatch everything wrong with Ratchet and Clank. Why won't you watch my new stuff? All kidding aside, I know these videos get piss all views, but I think they're fun to make, and honestly, I had some time to kill to make something easy, so I thought, screw it. I'm gonna self-indulge and get people to ask me stuff again. I did say I wanted to make it a yearly tradition as well, so, uh, yeah. As ever, if you asked a question and it didn't make it in, it's because someone asked your question before you, or because you forgot to follow the one freaking rule I posted! But, yeah, better luck next time to those who missed out. Um, anyway, let's jump in. Starting off with patrons, because I promise to answer all their questions and they're all good beans, so, um... Have you ever considered delving into other PS2 classics or more obscurities? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've mentioned a couple times that I want to do a series on forgotten racing games, like, uh, racing games that don't get talked about as often as others do. But even ignoring racing games, yeah, 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 like, I've got, I've got a bunch of plans to go back and look at a bunch of, like, PS2, GameCube, Xbox era platformers, maybe even earlier than that. There are a lot of hidden gems in there that I'd love to talk about, and also a lot of trash that I just love to trash talk for 30 minutes. <laughs> do you have any tips on Australian tourism? What destination or general advice is a must. I'll be honest, I don't travel a lot unless it's like a family thing, like Christmas or just like random gatherings, uh, funerals, that sort of stuff. So I'm not really well versed on this subject, but honestly, if you pick anywhere on the East Coast, you'll um, you'll, you'll have a pretty good time. And I'm not biased because I live on the East Coast. <laughs> I live down in the uh, very poorly named South Coast, which is on the Eastern Coast. Um, huh? And there's a lot of very, uh, like, I don't know, there's a lot of coastal towns nearby that are just, they're very pretty in a way. And there's a fair bit to do them too. But failing that, you could, you know, go check out like uh, Uluru, The Big Banana, Lake Disappointment, N-Word Head. Yes, that's real. Look it up. I think they changed the name actually, but still. All right, you stinky rack. You know what we really want to see, so can you please show us the goods? <sighs> Fine, just this once. How do you feel about games like Dragon Quest XI-S and Persona 5 Royal that make a lot of improvements and additions to a game and then sell as a standalone for near or full price? We, okay, with these two specific examples, uh, with Persona 5 Royal, a uh, hundred bucks, which is full price here, which, yeah, is ludicrous, sure, but a hundred bucks is absolutely ridiculous, I think. I mean, I, I personally have not played it yet, but from what I've heard, it's a lot of... Not necessarily small editions, but it really comes off as something that could have been sold as like a, a DLC, like a, a, I don't know, like a director's cut DLC or something. Dragon Quest XI S I think is a little bit more forgivable. It's very much the definitive version of the game. Um, like it's got all the extra character stories, lots of uh, quality of life improvements. It, it's still maybe asking a little too much. And again, maybe it should have been included as DLC, but I also understand why they repackaged it because it was a port of the Switch version. It's also not full price. It's 54 bucks here. I think it's like 30 or 40 bucks for uh, the US or whatever. But in general, honestly, I'd rather see them do it as DLC rather than like, didn't Kingdom Hearts do, uh, like, its sort of definitive version as DLC instead of, like, like how it used to do, like, Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, which would be a totally separate game? Like, people were crying out for a Kingdom Hearts 3 Final Mix, and then they got the, the Remind DLC or something, and people were like, No, we want Final Mix! That is Final Mix, isn't it? <laughs> But honestly, yeah, it really depends on the price and how much they add to it. I think Dragon Quest is an alright example, Persona 5 Royal, not so much. Even though it's still a good game and I'd, I'd totally recommend it. And, uh, yeah. This one's just for fun. Have you ever thought of watching Hot Wheels movies? No, not particularly. I think, um, I do remember one that I watched as a kid. I think it came with, like, a Hot Wheels set or something, or maybe it came in a cereal box. I don't remember. But I have a very, very vague recollection of it. I, th I think the car was called, like, the, the, the Big Surf or something. I don't know. Like, the main car. I don't know. Hot Wheels is not something I'm, like, hugely interested in. So, it's never really crossed my mind, to be honest. Do any of your loved ones know about the YouTube channel or your dive into the furry fandom? If so, what do they think? Um, a lot of people, like, not only in my family, but just in the town that I live in, uh, they're totally aware that I have a YouTube channel, and, like, every time I talk to them, they're like, Oh, so, um, so, Aaron, they still call me that, Aaron, how's your, how's your, how's your YouTube channel going? And I'm like, how do you know? <laughs> But yeah, most of my family knows no one in real life except uh, the people I live or lived with know that I'm a furry, and I will probably keep it that way. <laughs> Thoughts on Warhammer, Fantasy, or 40k as a setting, game, or thing to burn money on? Um, 
I will admit my ex-partner did sort of get me kind of interested in Warhammer. I don't know if it's something I'm ready to drop money on, though I did drop what was probably thousands of dollars on rock bands, so you, you know, you never know. <laughs> Was there ever a defining experience or character that made you question your gender or sexuality, or did it just kind of happen? Sexuality-wise, uh, back when I was in high school, there was a, um, a, a, a very, a very cute boy. <laughs> I never talked to him, we weren't friends or anything, and back at that point, I was like, I'm not even sure what these feelings are, but in retrospect, eight or nine years later, I'm suddenly thinking, oh, that makes a lot of sense why I used to look at him a lot. <laughs> With gender, um... Okay, this is this is a little hard to talk about, <laughs> but some people will know I'm into uh, what's called TF, which stands for transformation, and I think the easiest way to explain that is, have you seen the reverse bimbofication image? Yeah, it's like that, but remove the bimbofication. <laughs> Because, uh, and I imagine it's the same for a lot of trans people as well, but because I do get a lot of gender and body dysphoria, I do tend to look at a lot of, like, uh, TF and TG art, and even sort of participate in that community myself. And there is a surprising amount of people who follow me on YouTube here who do actually know this, and this is probably also news to a lot of people as well. But back when I was younger, I discovered, uh, you know, like, the TF community and stuff, and I discovered what they were doing. There was, like, you know, like, male to female transformations and things like that, and I thought, you know, this is, this is kind of cool. <laughs> and then I started wondering, hmm, I wonder... I wonder what it would be like to be Goral, to put it in the simplest way possible without going too deep into it. <laughs> because this is, this is opening up a whole can of worms. It would take me forever to explain uh, why I'm into this and all that sort of stuff. But mm, I don't know, like this is kind of interesting to me because here in 2021, I'm more like openly ready to actually admit this, but I have tried on clothes of the opposite gender and like, <laughs> It, it, it felt good, yes, but there was also a part of me that didn't really feel all that different either. And I have also thought about, you know, like whether I would be a happier person if I were to transition from male to female. And thinking about that as well, um, that, that there's a part of me that thinks maybe I would be happier. And there's a part of me that thinks, well, I don't know if whether I have, you know, a pee, -pee or a JJ would actually like really solve anything. I think I just sort of exist in the middle. And even recently, I'm still sort of, like, questioning that. But at the same time, you know, like, I guess, like, I'm happy with who I am at the moment. There's still a lot I need to work on. Like, I get a lot of body dysphoria in particular. Like, I feel like if I were able to slim down, I think that would solve a lot of my problems because that's the kind of body that I would desire most. And I guess I'd also be able to pass as either gender if I really tried. But, um, yeah, like... I don't know. I, I feel like this answer is a little bit jumbled at this point. Um, sorry if... <laughs> I, yeah, I, I do not, like, verbally talk about this often. Actually, I don't really talk about it at all, because I don't really have anyone, like, in my life to talk to... Uh, to talk to about it. So this is kind of new. But, um, yeah. <laughs> I understand last year was a terrible shit show for you, more so than most of us here. So, how have the past three or so months been for you? I mean, I'll be honest, I'm kind of on and off. Like, yeah, like, for people who don't know, I did have a really bad year, like, <laughs> to put it bluntly. Like, you know, COVID struck, like, obviously everyone was affected by that, but, but then, you know, my mum passed away from cancer. I basically just went on into a full, like, depressed, almost hermit-like state for, like, several months, almost. And then right at the end of the year, my nan passed away as well. And it was also around that point where I started to discover that I was aromantic. Which, being in a relationship at the time, yeah, that was kind of awkward. So, yeah, shitty year, but I like to think I'm doing a lot better now. Um, what's been really good for me now is that we've actually just moved house, and I think that's sort of the change I needed, because being stuck in that house that we were living at, there was a lot of memories tied to it, I guess, that I just didn't want, you know, like, permeating my thoughts at every waking moment. And while I'd say I'm not, like, out of the woods yet or anything, I think being in this house has really helped, you know, I'm starting to find the motivation to draw and make videos again, and not to say that that motivation never fully disappeared, it's just, you know, it was just kind of hard in that house due to a couple of different circumstances, but, um, you know what, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm doing alright, I could be better, but I'm doing alright. Just as a curiosity, if I met you in person, how would you or them like to be acknowledged? Um, I actually get similar questions quite a lot, and they're also similarly kind of weirdly worded, like, I'm, I'm sorry if 
you're offended by that. But I guess some people do sort of struggle with the uh, they, them pronouns, which is partially understandable, but also partially at the same time, people have been using these pronouns like pretty much forever to refer to anyone and anything, you know, like it's, it's not a particularly big change. Like instead of he, you use they, instead of him, you use them. You don't even have to change like you or anything like that. I'm still you or me or you know, all those like very standard common identifiers. It's just, it's just like he, him, his get changed. And yeah, <laughs> honestly, I wouldn't mind too much anyway, because I am a very male presenting person. But uh, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't get up you if you called me he or whatever. I'd just be like, all right, you're on your final warning. So now that there's a new Ratchet and Clank game coming out, will you make it E-Raw of the game? Uh, mm, I have talked about this a lot, um, especially over on my community tab and on Twitter. But just in case you missed the memo, there will be absolutely no everything right and wrong with videos ever made on my channel ever again. I just don't enjoy the format anymore, you know? Par partially because it's CinemaSins and I really don't want to be associated with CinemaSins, even if it's only very loosely. And yeah, I don't know. It's, it's just not something I ever want to do again. But I did say on Twitter that if a first party Sony rep gets confirmed for Smash Brothers, I would do everything right and wrong with Rift Apart, and I will still uphold that promise. Even if I don't want to, I will still do it. So please do not go and tell Nintendo you want that. <laughs> please. <laughs> have you played any of the Castlevania games? And if you have, which is your favorite? I've only really dabbled with um, like Symphony of the Night. My only like real exposure to the series is the uh, Netflix animation. And um, Trevor's a big hottie. <laughs> So like, imagine this, Remy, but they are monkey. Mmm, monkey. I know Remy is a shapeshifter, but their primary form is raccoon. Why rack? Any significance to the choice? I think this question's slightly outdated because I recently decided that Remy wouldn't be a shapeshifting raccoon anymore. I figured that was kind of overpowered, partially because they already have their pocket tail, which is like, you know, fucking hammer space stored in their tail. That's, that's already, you know, sort of overpowered to begin with. But I do also plan on writing, uh, a book or a series of books that star Remy and my other character Riker. And I thought mm, maybe having the pocket tail and shapeshifting would maybe just be a little bit too much. I think that's another question later on where I'll uh, go a little bit more into detail with that. But um, yeah, uh, as for Raccoon, not my first choice actually, maybe like second or third, but it, like if I had a chance to do a do-over, it would probably be like, Remy would probably be like, I don't even know if I'd name them Remy at that point because it would depend on what species they are, but I would probably make them like a lizard or a kobold or a dragon or something like that, a chameleon, something scaly. I really like lizards, lizards are cool. <laughs> it was partially my ex-partner. Um, They were like, hey, you should, uh, you should draw Remy as a raccoon. I bet you that would be like really cute. And it was, and it just sort of stuck. But you know, I do vibe with raccoons as well. You know, little fucking, trash eating pieces of chunky shit that's me that's me all right are you keanu chungus wholesome 100 i never want to read or say anything like that ever again on a side note has reviewing other playstation exclusives blah, 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 exclusives come to mind oh yeah of course absolutely like i still really want to do the um sly series like i definitely have that plan for the future but apart from that i don't really have much else planned like if i play a game and i vibe with it or if i find it interesting to talk about then yeah i'm um, off we go you know, we'll do it. <laughs> Heartless or nobody? To be honest, I was never really a big fan of Kanye West past graduation, but that Mitsuki track, mm-mm, that's a banger. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, the Heartless are kind of cute. Axel's kind of hot, so I can't really say. <laughs> What's your favorite paint job for the spaceship in Ratchet and Clank 3? Um, one of the black ones? I think it was, I think it was like called like Black Space or Drex Black Heart or something. That was the one that I usually defaulted to. When you were younger, about what job did you say, I want to do that when I'm older? Um, write fiction. And I was sort of on and off about this ever since. Like I did get into writing fan fiction when I was around, uh, I think it was like 15. And I did that for four or five years. And you know, at this point, um, a lot of people know that I wrote a uh, 146,000 word Pokemon fan fiction. <laughs> But once I started writing reviews and stuff, I was like, you know, this is sort of what I want to do. I think I would rather write uh, more grounded stuff like this, reviews, all that sort of stuff. But fairly recently, I decided, you know, I kind of want to give it a go. So I've been sort of plotting stuff out, you know, um, coming up with characters. Uh, some of you will have seen Riker by this point. He's intended to be one of the two main characters alongside Remy in a story. Essentially, at, a, at its core, it's a um, body swap narrative. 
And you've got Remy who lives like uh, on these floating islands. So, you know, there's like cities built on floating islands. It's a very like advanced, I guess, sort of futuristic civilization. And then you've got Rikard down on the surface. And there are people on the surface who are like there because of, I don't know, I'm still working out the kinks of this, I guess. Like, like uh, I don't know, socioeconomic disparity, I guess. But like the surface is like, you know, super hostile. There's like mutated creatures because uh, like, you know, the, the, like the floating islands have like split off from the earth due to some like cataclysmic event that, I don't know, cracked the earth or some shit. And then there's like some sort of shit within the earth's core that spewed out and mutated creatures and shit. I don't know. I'm still working out the kinks, but I just want to write like like a body swap narrative that isn't just the usual oh no i'm i've been body swapped with a girl and the prom's tomorrow that sort of shit i fucking hate that well, i don't hate but that shit eh. i want to write a body swap narrative that's recontextualized into like as sort of like fantasy sci-fi adventure thing where yeah obviously there's going to be a whole lot of like oh no we're in each other's bodies this is weird sort of thing but in a way like um putting Remy in Riker's body will allow them to act as a vessel for readers to see what exactly is happening down on the surface and also for Remy to learn what's happening down on the surface and there's like a whole bunch of I don't know <laughs> but yeah this answer's gotten kind of long um this is probably a bit more than you expected for an answer I don't know whatever but yeah I want to write a book <laughs> or a series of books I don't know writing's fun any game you didn't like initially, but grew to like over time? The game that jumps out at me is probably Wolfenstein The New Order. I remember uh, picking that up and I played most of the first level and I was like, wow, this is a very generic um, war shooter. Like there were a couple cool spectacles, like how the plane flies into the side of the building while you're climbing up it. But um, but yeah, um, I ended up dropping it because I was just like, you know, whatever, I don't really feel like playing another Call of Duty. But then uh, other people reassured me, no, this is like one of the best shooters of the era. And I was like, okay, sure, I'll give it another go. Wow, this is really fucking sick. <laughs> I replayed it again on PC and yeah, it's just as good as it was like uh, six or seven years ago. <laughs> so when did you learn that you were a furry? Were you a closet furry and couldn't accept the idea? In denial until you confront being a furry face to face or did it all just come at you naturally? Like many others, I think that Pokemon Mystery Dungeon was the source of my uh, <clears throat> furriness, I guess. And that was at a very young age. Like, I think that was like, oh, how old was I? I think it was 13 or 14 when um, Blue Rescue Team released. Blue and Red Rescue Team, rather. So I was uh, a closeted furry until about, oh, I think, two or three years ago. It definitely wasn't that I couldn't accept being a furry, it's just that I knew there was a lot of weirdness around the fandom and I didn't really want to get involved in it. And the idea of being called things like, uh, like, dog fucker didn't really interest me, but, um, yeah, like two years ago I said, fuck it, I'm a furry, I don't care, I don't care what people think about me. This is me. I am a goat. <laughs> you start at point A. You travel 10 miles south, 10 miles west, and then 10 miles north, meeting back at point A. You see a bear. What colour is the bear? Red, because I kicked the shit out of it in self-defence. If you can only play one game from the big three, Nintendo, Sony and Microsoft, and one indie game from any console for the rest of your life, what would be your choices? For the big three, I would pick stuff that I could make stuff in, or play other people's creations. So I guess for Nintendo, Mario Maker, for Sony, Mod Nation Races, and for Microsoft, I want to pick Forza Horizon 4 because of the track editor, but at the same time I know I'm just going to get bored of that map like I already am. And there's not really anything else that like, si there's not really anything else from Microsoft that I would like want to play forever. At least not, a, at least, at least not off the top of my head. So I guess that's just kind of my default answer because I can't think of anything better. As for indie games, I either go something like Osu or Quaver uh, as my rhythm game fix uh, or Clone Hero or Hollow Knight because I feel like that would be kind of fun to play repeatedly and try to speed run and stuff. Favorite fairy, uh, Chris, Chris Yim. Chester is fucking adorable and I want to squish his cheeks so bad. Thoughts on Legends of Chima? I don't even know what the fuck that is. <laughs> Where's top 10 clank levels, damn it? Uh, okay, let's see. Um, number 10, the uh, first 10% of the clank sections from A Crack in Time. Number 9, the second 10% of the clank levels from A Crack in Time. Number 8, the third, how would you implement weapon modding in Rift Apart? There's two ways I'd like to really see, and both of them involve getting rid of the leveling up system. 
essentially. On one hand, um, keep the upgrade trees, so, uh, you know, you, you just pick up rare titanium, pull rare titanium into the weapons you want, or you either find or buy certain upgrades or customizations for it. Like, maybe weapons could be like constructo weapons, where you can change parts out, but you'll have to find or buy them first. Or maybe there's just flat upgrades, like how in All for One, instead of upgrading your weapons through use, you just go back to the vendor and be like, oh, I want more ammo, please, thank you. Basically, just any system which makes me go, oh, um, you know, uh, I think the negotiator would be really good for this situation. But my combustor's still at level 3. I would rather use weapons based on what fits the situation, but in a linear action game like this, I find the idea of leveling up to be kind of superfluous. Maybe not superfluous, I'm not sure if that's the right word, but I just... It's something about it... It's fun, but it also just kind of doesn't mix, in my opinion. Would you ever consider reviewing the Metal Gear Solid series in the future? Maybe, maybe not, because I have small pea brain, and I reckon a lot of uh, what Metal Gear Solid talks about just flies straight over my head. <laughs> What's your favorite platformer? Mario 3D World. I really love how it recontextualizes the 2D Mario format and puts it in a 3D format, and I am glad that uh, a lot more people are appreciating that nowadays. Now that they've been through the 3D game that they wanted with Odyssey, now they can look at 3D World with a different, like, with like a different set of eyes and think, wow, this is actually, you know, really cool for what it is. This isn't what I wanted back on the Wii U, but now that I have Odyssey as a different thing, this kicks ass. But before Odyssey, I loved the hell out of 3D World. I actually like it way more than Odyssey. I'm not even that big of a fan of Odyssey. I'm sure that's not a secret at this point, but <laughs> 3D World, yeah, probably my favorite platformer. Any game series you want to get into but haven't for whatever reason? Um, I've been playing uh, Disco Elysium recently, and I know it's not quite the same thing because this is more about, you know, like doing detective work and talking to people more so than it is actual combat, but it makes me want to go back and play a lot of those more, what's the word, old school PC RPGs? Stuff like, um, I don't know, Neverwinter Nights, Pills of Eternity, Divinity Original Sin, Titan Quest, that sort of thing. I've also considered getting into either Destiny or Final Fantasy XIV, but the former seems like a big grind, and the latter, I have to talk to people. And fuck that. <laughs> Any upcoming games you're excited for? I can't think of many off the top of my head. Um, there is a game that I'm following the development of on Twitter called Lil Gator, which looks really goddamn cute. Um, Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown got announced last year, and I think that's about to get a trailer this month. It might already be out at this point. But it's being made by the guys who make the very good WRC series at the moment. So while I'm, I'm not going to get too hyped, but I am pretty confident that that's going to turn out really good. Apart from that, and of course, the expected Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, not a lot else at the moment. Maybe Final Fantasy 16, I guess, but that's probably like 27 years off. Which Ratchet and Clank game is your favorite? I don't know. Um, I <sighs> this this tends to this tends to change a lot as of very recently. I played the Ratchet and Clank 2 recently. Uh, usually I think 3 is a lot better than that, but uh, because of like how focused the combat is in that. But coming back to 2, I really did appreciate the sections where it was just like platforming and some light puzzles and stuff. And I also appreciated the uh enemy variety a lot more but then I got to deadlocked and deadlocked honestly has uh probably my favorite combat in the entire series except for maybe 2016 which I know is blasphemous but I genuinely think 2016 probably plays the best out of any of the games in the series even with all the the crappy shit surrounding it but then there's also a crack in time which has like some of the better storytelling in the series especially the ending I still love that ending but I think a crack in time also shows uh some glimpses of what Ratchet and Clank could be I do like the idea of flying to different uh, sectors and like, you know, exploring the moons and finding collectibles and stuff and doing missions. But what if they, what if they took that and expanded upon it a bit? Not, not fully turning it into an open world thing, but just, uh, oh, excuse me, just having like, just having like big areas to explore and finding collectibles and yeah, you know, like all sorts of secrets and just stuff you can explore at your own pace. That's the sort of stuff I want from games, and I don't know if that would be perfect for Ratchet and Clank specifically, but I would still really like to see them try and do it, which they sort of did in a crack in time, but not, I just wish they'd expanded upon it a little bit more because as it is, it's just go to some very similar looking moons or uh, tow this guy to the fucking battleplex. It's kind of boring, but 
a Kraken time I still really like. Uh, at some point I thought, hmm, maybe this is maybe this is my favorite, you know? So I think it's a to it's 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 a toss up between two, three, deadlocked and a Kraken time, and that really doesn't narrow it down, but it just tends to uh, just I don't know. Ask me on any other day, and I'll probably have a different answer. <laughs> Opinions on Pokemon Gen 5, probably the best gen. It's a little different now, but back when I got this at launch and it was just nothing but new Pokemon until post game, it was the coolest shit as a kid. Why is Goofy considered a person and Pluto considered a pet when they're both dogs anyway? I'll answer this when you answer me why you tap danced on that little girl's corpse, you fucking asshole. How fluffy is Remy? This. Juice 2 or Pro Street? Mm, not sure if I'm equipped enough to say which yet because I have some very mixed feelings on Pro Street that might change when I finally get around to actually playing it for the retrospective. Meanwhile, Juice 2 was pretty good until the second half of the game where it basically just became wall riding simulator. Though again, this was my experience as a kid that could totally change if I played it nowadays. But I think I'd still lean towards uh, Pro Street. What's your favorite rhythm game? Rock Band 3, straight up. I still love that game, you know? I, I still play it, uh, like, at least fortnightly. I'm pretty sure I've definitely gotten my money's worth at this point. <laughs> What's your favorite game that you know most people have a negative opinion of? Maybe using the term favorite is a little ingenuous, but I don't really get the hate towards Secret Agent Clank. That, like, like, that's probably the only game I can think of off the top of my head that I sort of enjoyed and a lot of people genuinely do not. But, uh, on a first playthrough, it's not bad. The weapons, not bad, especially over in Ratchet's section where uh, once you get a lot of them upgraded, they're actually really good and really fun to use. What's your favorite metal band? And what do you think of Motionless in White? I couldn't pick one favorite, there's no way on earth, but uh, a bunch of metal bands I like, um, Avenged Sevenfold, Opeth, Galnarius, um, I guess uh, Jeff Williams, the guy who does the Red vs. Blue and Ruby soundtracks, kind of counts as well. Devin Townsend, most of his stuff is very good, um, especially Deconstruction and Ziltoid the Omniscient. Dream Theater as well, I guess that's more prog than anything, but still. Uh, a couple other bands I really like, um, that not many people have heard of before. Stuff like Black Peaks and Astronoid. Yeah, I don't know, they're all, they're all pretty good bands, I'd, I'd recommend them in a heartbeat. As for Motionless in White, the only, the only song I know from them is Abigail, I think, and that's only because, uh, I bought it on Rock Band 3 way back when. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's really all I can say about it. It's fine. When is the Y2K retrospective come out? Do not tempt me. I will do it so fast, it's not even funny. What would be your favorite racing game as of now? Uh, I'd reckon Gran Turismo 4 is still my favorite. It has been for a couple years after looking back on that top 10 I did where I said Forza Horizon 2 was my favorite, which, oh my fucking god, Ren, really? Um, but uh, yeah, Gran Turismo 4 basically unmatched. Are you going to review Rift Apart? Just for that, no. I don't care whether it was in a mocking tone or not, just because you asked, no. No more Ratchet and Clank content, all cancelled, nah, fuck it. Yes, obviously. <laughs> Besides Kuita Hero, what other rhythm games do you like? Clone Hero, obviously, but uh, also I play a hell of a lot of DJ Max Respect on PC. And I guess, um, I haven't really delved into Osu, or well, sorry, Os, I, I think I called it Osu previously in this video, but uh, Os. While I haven't played a lot of that, I beat the absolute shit out of Elite Beat Agents. That game is probably my favorite on the DS, maybe? I don't know, it's 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 damn good. If you had to do a video on a movie, what would it be? <gasps> I have no idea why this is the first thought that jumps out at me, but I would love to do a video on the Digimon movie. I don't even know if it would work that well at all, but I would just love to just sit down and talk smack about that movie for 20 or 30 minutes, because it's just it is just, oh boy. <laughs> Also, then I can prove that I can flawlessly sing one week by Bare Naked Ladies. <laughs> Make it E-Roar, please. You fu <laughs> Hey Remy, how are you doing while still remaining stuck in quarantine? Hope you're doing okay. Personal issues that I discussed uh, previously aside, quarantine life kind of doesn't exist here anymore. Australia's been pretty onto it. Like if one person gets, uh, you know, like a confirmed case, they'll just shut down like the whole region immediately and put them into lockdown for like, I don't know, like three days or a week or something. We haven't had that at all. And even then, that's only happened like every now and then throughout the entire country. So pretty much here, quarantine life doesn't exist. Like we, we go out, we can do whatever the hell we want so long as we're, you know, um, sanitizing our hands and keeping clean and maintaining sh uh, social distancing and stuff. So honestly, yeah, not that bad. Why are you cute? 
Maybe I'm not cute. Maybe that's just how your demented mind perceives me. I'm sorry, that's actually really mean. You're not demented. <laughs> Who would you consider as the most important influence in your YouTube career? Mm, I, I do not care for the man anymore, and I do not agree with his views or opinions at all, and I cannot continue to support him, but it would be a miss to say that JonTron was not a big influence on uh, my reviews and stuff. He was very much a big influence back in the day, like when I was just starting out. You can especially see it with Ford vs Chevy. But I think as time has passed, uh, my inspirations have sort of changed a little bit, shifted towards the more grounded uh, reviewers, people like Nitro Rad, uh, Racevic, White Light, you know, uh, people like that. But then there's also the part of me that wants to use, uh, you know, like Remy for animated skits and putting them up in videos uh, as stills and stuff. And I think that part is more influenced by uh, people uh, the, like the uh, animation community, like people like Jaden Animations and Katsun specifically. And I think with some of my jokes and edits uh, more recently within the past few years, I, I think they were most likely influenced by some of the people in the commentary community, most specifically Pyrocynical. Are you into cars IRL? If so, what's your favourite car? Honestly, I'm not that much of a car person. I mostly just really like playing racing games. I find them really fun and uh, I guess also cathartic in a way and kind of as a way to relax relax as well. I mean, I still really like cars and I could easily pick favorites, but it's just like, I don't know a lot about them. I don't really, you know, tinker with them. I couldn't afford to tinker with them even if I wanted to. <laughs> but my favorite easily is the uh, Pagani Zonda Cinque. Oi, Remy, I'll cut you a deal. We're both short, but you're shorter. If you hop up on my shoulders, you can grab me the M&Ms and whatever you want. We got a deal? Screw your stinky M&Ms. I'm going straight for the white chocolate pretzels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you find being a sort of big YouTuber overwhelming sometimes? I'm not even that big to be quite honest. Like most of my views don't, uh, mm, most of my videos don't really get a lot of views. Like yeah, the Ratchet and Clank ones did especially well. I think um, I've got three or four videos over 300,000 views at this point, which is just like fucking hell. <laughs> but honestly, not really. Like at times, yes, like I'll, I'll have thoughts where I'm like, ooh, a lot of people are gonna be watching this. Is this video good enough? Like, you know, those those sort of like imposter syndrome thoughts that a lot of creators get. But honestly, no, it's it's not that bad, to be honest. What do you regret most in your life in retrospective? Uh, <laughs> lol, that's a bit of a tonal whiplash. <laughs> honestly, something I'm not really comfortable discussing on here. I guess like, apart from the thing which I don't want to discuss, um, I guess like I wish I wasn't so lax with my YouTube uploads. I kind of wish I'd stuck with it more because I know if I had, I probably would have been way further into this at this point. I would have had way more subs, a way bigger fan base. Not to say that having a small fan base, uh, not to say that having all you guys is bad, hell no. <laughs> I just can't help but to think that I could have been a lot further along by now, and I do sort of regret that, but eh, you know, whatever. Just gotta stick with it. What's your favorite band and why isn't it Rise Against? Look, <laughs> Rise Against churn out jam after jam, and like, there's a whole bunch of songs from them I love, fucking uh, like what? Savior, Paper Wings, uh, Architects, a whole bunch of stuff I'm having trouble remembering right now because admittedly I have not listened to them in a little while, but a lot of their songs kind of sound the same, and I don't know if that's the vocalist's fault or something, but like, they're really good, they're really high up in my ranking, but eh. My favorite's probably someone like Avenged Sevenfold or Opeth or um, uh, blah, 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 Acid Man. What was one of your first experiences with Pokemans? I still kind of vividly remember um, during a car ride home from uh, a trip like several hundred kilometers up north, I had my Game Boy and uh, like I was trying to, you know, like shine the light from the street lamps overhead as we drove past to see what the hell I was doing. And I was like this close to getting a Venusaur and I was on like uh, whatever the route was next to Vermilion City to the right of that. For some reason, I was just there grinding up my Ivysaur and I finally managed to get it to, I think, uh, level 32 is when it evolves. I finally managed to get it there and I watched the animation and right as the evolution finished and Venusaur let out its cry, Game Boy went dead. <laughs> I must have cried for like half an hour. <laughs> Can our OCs kiss uh, 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 and a uh, hold? Hold, hold hands? Sure, I'll hold your hand. And then I'll swing you around and hit every enemy around me like that one animation kitty you does in Yakuza 0. That's my way of showing affection. What's Remy's middle name? The. I actually have no idea what their middle or last names are, but for now it's just Remy the Raccoon. <laughs>
Give me your favorite Need for Speed or street racing game. Need for Speed Most Wanted hands down. Midnight Club 3 is very close, but like I said in my video, there's just something sort of Stockholm syndrome-y about Most Wanted that just keeps pulling me back. Hypothetically, say they just released yet another Ratchet & Clank movie, what's your reaction? I guess that would entirely depend on how the movie is, but otherwise, uh, if another Ratchet & Clank movie gets announced, it's going to be a reaction of total indifference. I didn't even hate the Ratchet & Clank movie, I just think it was kind of, mm, what's the word, uh, boring? <laughs> It, it it was very by the numbers when Ratchet and Clank uh, had the opportunity to not be by the numbers due to the universe it was set in, and it just wasn't. It was a standard DreamWorks discount Pixar romp, and it just kind of was boring. <laughs> Will you still do review videos like Grand Theft Jack? You know what I mean, the really good reviews that had vibes of everything wrong with without being it at all. I'm gonna be honest, I don't really get this question because not really a lot has changed uh, in my review style. Really the only thing that's changed is the uh, like the, the presentation aspects. Obviously I'm using Remy to represent myself on screen now and um, like everything's blue and orange and there are those title cards which I won't use in every video. It will be specific to uh, specific videos. It just depends on how I structure them I guess but I just don't see much of a difference between say like uh, the most recent Need for Speed video and something like like Grand Theft Jack or Jack 3 Beyond Thunderdome or uh, like stuff like that. I don't, I don't really see how people could possibly compare it to everything wrong with as well because they're just like two totally different content styles. Like one's totally nitpicky and the other's everything wrong with. No, I kid. <laughs> but like, I don't know, everything wrong with was just going through the game chronologically and just nitpicking everything and maybe saying something good about it every now and then. Whereas the reviews are just reviews I guess and like this is actually a comment I've gotten a couple of times and I can't tell whether that people actually find that there is a difference between my new and old reviews which I personally can't see or whether it's more of a longing for everything wrong with to come back and like I don't know that's that's just like what I sort of gather from it you know but like I just don't see a difference like Grand Theft Jack and uh like the most recent Need for Speed video are pretty much structured the exact same you know talk about the story talk about the gameplay talk about some of the bad stuff mixed in between some of the good stuff and then wrap it up and i just yeah i don't know <laughs> like i'm not having a go at you or anything it's just i don't know that's just kind of odd to me i guess do you regret the choices you've made to shape your youtube career i would lie if i said no but it's not a huge thing to me like i do sort of wish that i'd uh i'd found my own way doing my own type of content rather than you know riding off the coattails of cinema sins but uh, you know those videos made a lot of people very happy you know and people are still you know messaging me all the time saying oh when a when a fucking when are e is coming back? Like, oh, you're gonna do uh, Jack and Axel, Lost Frontier, you're gonna do Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, that sort of stuff, and it does sort of hurt to have to look at them and say, no, I'm not doing that stuff anymore, I don't enjoy it. So I do sort of regret that I made everything wrong with, or everything right and wrong with the, like, the crutch of my YouTube career, because I, yeah, I, I would have much rather found my own way. But like I said, they made a lot of people happy. I still go back and watch them every now and then and I laugh and I think, oh, that was pretty funny. You know, that wasn't a bad video, but I still sort of look back at that point and think, I really wish I did that another way. But I can't go back and change that, so I'm stuck with that fact. And honestly, it's not necessarily a bad fact to be stuck with. Are we going to get more sketch videos like Jack 2 is Easy and Sea of Thief? Personal favourite videos on your channel, I'd shrink with joy if we got more. Um, don't tell anyone, but I kind of want to do one uh, related to Miitopia when it releases on the Switch. I don't know if it will come out around that point because I have a few too many projects to work on, you know, like uh, Ratchet and Clank stuff. Otherwise, yeah, I would like to do more of those videos. It's just kind of hard uh, finding games to do them on. I guess, you know, and sort of making it feel natural because those videos are scripted and it's sort of hard to make them feel natural in a way that say like, uh, I think his name's Indie Mouse or Video Game Donkey would do so. So I'll probably do more in the future. It's just like, it, they're probably not gonna be super common, but if I get an idea, I'll work on it. Did you consider getting a Remy fursuit? Yes, I'm still considering it. No, I'm not gonna get it now because uh, I, I, I live with people and I'm pretty sure they don't wanna see me walking around in a fucking raccoon suit all day. <laughs> but if I ever like, move away and um like conventions uh very close to me i would probably 
Well, even if conventions weren't a thing, I'd still probably get a Remy fursuit. Who's your favorite Undertale character or characters? I'm not sure I could explain why, but I do sort of have a soft spot for uh, Toriel. With all the changes to YouTube, it's becoming harder and harder for smaller channels to become recognized and gain the traction they need to grow. The level of outreach to subscribers seems to dwindle, especially if it's not content that's hot according to the YouTube algorithm. That being said, what are your top 10 weed- Oh, you fucking ass. No, but seriously, what do you do to combat burnout that builds even when working on passion projects? What do I do? <laughs> the thing is, I'm not really sure I do anything. I just sort of, like, do stuff when I feel I can do it. Sometimes it's hard for me to be motivated, so I just sort of cruise along as I can. And uh, sometimes I really need that motivation and can't find it, so I just sort of force myself to do it. And sometimes that works out and sometimes it, it doesn't. I mean, I guess the main thing that helps is just turning your brain off and doing something else for a bit. Maybe go listen to music, go for a walk, uh, play some video games, that sort of stuff. Like, I don't know. That, that I Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to cope with this properly. I just sort of go along with it, I guess. <laughs> if you can pick one chip flavor, what would it be? Honey soy chicken. Pair that with spicy capsicum dip and mm, 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 mm. PS Vita or Nintendo 3DS? PS Vita, I think, is a better console. Nintendo 3DS has the better game library. I mean, obviously, that's completely subjective. Maybe you'll look at all the, um, like, the, the AA RPGs and think, wow, that, that's much more appealing to me. But, you know, Nintendo, uh, the 3DS has stuff like fucking Mario. <laughs> Smash Brothers, uh, Shin Megami Tensei, Etrian Odyssey. I mean, it's it's not a bad little RPG system itself. But the Vita's got some underrated gems as well. Like, people don't really talk about Freedom Wars a lot. Freedom Wars is fucking awesome. But no, most of the time people will just look at the Vita and say it's the Persona 4 Golden Machine. And honestly, that, like, even though I don't think the game library is that great, that could not be further from the truth. It's a Gran Turismo PSP machine, for fuck's sake. Will you do a Fortnite? Let oh, fuck off. If you could have built your channel from any franchise other than Ratchet and Clank, what would it have been? Mm, Rock Band would make the most sense because I think that's probably the game I've spent the most time on out of any game mm, ever. Or maybe something like Forza or Gran Turismo because I'm pretty well versed in those games as well. Or maybe something like uh, Dragon Quest as well. Like if I could just make content about Dragon Quest 8 forever, I think I'd be happy with that. <laughs> out of all the videos you've published, which one did you have the most fun making? I think, uh, even though it's been over four years since I released it at this point, I think it's still easily My Little Pony games. But honestly, um, the more recent stuff, uh, Enthusia, Need for Speed Most Wanted, um, Wholesome Games, those have been probably almost as fun purely because I've finally gotten to uh, start using Remy in them, which I think um, my videos are finally starting to look like what I envisioned them being. Pokemon ROM hack video, when? That's, you know what, that's actually a really good fucking idea, I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> You're not getting credit for giving me the idea, though. Yo, can we get Riker to read the next question? Uh, I can't voice act. <laughs> you know what? Fine, here he is. Can we make this official merch? I do not know. Ratchet RPG 01. You will ask Remy. Hey, Remy, my esteemed raccoon friend, can we make this beautiful shirt official merchandise for your YouTube channel? No. What do you believe is the core purpose for your channel? What is it you're bringing to the YouTube table? Reviews? <laughs> no, I kid. Uh... Though I haven't been great with it in the past, I guess um, one of the things I really want to do is create a, this is going to sound a bit weird, like a sort of, I guess, safe space where anyone of any ethnicity, any gender, any, you know, sexual identity can come here without fear of being punched down at, you know? And like I said, I haven't been great with that in the past. I know there's been a couple times where I've told, like, uh, a transphobic joke. I have said the F slur and uh, the R slur as well as, uh, I think that was back in my Ford vs Chevy video, which is part of the reason why I don't look back on that video particularly fondly. But since then, uh, and obviously being non-binary and bisexual and aromantic myself doesn't give me a free pass, but, like, um, I've tried to make my content as, like, uh, when I tell jokes, I just try not to punch down, you know, and I want people to feel comfortable watching my stuff without fear of going, oh, they're making fun of me. <laughs> and also, there is a little bit of a stigma against, um, furry channels on YouTube. Like, uh, I wouldn't really consider myself a furry YouTuber, but obviously I use my persona as my, um, you know, avatar. But, like, um helping to reduce that stigma, I guess. Did I just hit the mic? I don't know. Helping to reduce that stigma, I guess, would also be kind of a 
not necessarily the big goal, but just like, you know, it, it would be nice if that sort of helped. Because at the moment you've got like actual furry YouTubers like uh, Majima Strawberry and uh, Beta Ada Deloder, who mostly do regular furry stuff, and then the rest of the furry side of YouTube is just people talking absolute shit about topics that they either don't know about or are just completely wrong about, like fucking, you know, uh, why we need racism, that sort of shit. Why can't furry YouTubers be wholesome and just, you know, review platformers or something? <laughs> are you going to review Shin Megami Tensei Devil Summoner Raido Kuzunoha versus the Solus Army for the PS2 console? You can't tell me that game's real. That doesn't sound real. But in all seriousness, was there ever a project that you wanted to make but scrapped due to overambition or limited audience appeal? Oh, a whole bunch at this point. The very first video I scrapped was going to be my second one, which I think was going to be a review on uh, Pac-Man's Ghostly Adventures or something, that uh, Xbox 360 game based on that newer Pac-Man cartoon. And I scrapped that because it was just kind of an average game. It was fine. It, was, it had its bad parts. It had its good parts. It just wasn't that interesting to talk about. That video was also going to be live action, so you almost got more live action me and uh, yeah <laughs> um there's been a couple others as well like i w i did a um i did a video where i went onto club penguin and started asking people to subscribe for me and the whole point of the video was to get someone to subscribe from uh to me i think that was just as club penguin was shutting down um and i was just capitalizing on that which in the end i didn't feel all that great about and i wasn't really sure the video was that funny anyway so i just sort of scrapped it and more recently um this one's still sort of up in the air but i sort of wanted to do a ps5 review where I spent like the first third of the video or so talking about the console itself and uh, then the rest of the video would be talking about um, some of the PS5 games I played like uh, Sackboy, WRC9, Bug Snacks, Destruction All-Stars, that sort of stuff and just giving like little um, I guess like three to four minute reviews on them but in the end I thought it's getting sort of close to Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart and there's another project uh, a particularly big project that I want to work on that is going to get in the way of that and by this point no one really needs a ps5 review so at the moment it's just sitting on google docs uh like fucking eleven thousand words written and nothing's going to ever happen with it probably and that's kind of sad but that's just how it goes i guess what's a game people praise constantly but you can't stand Grab your torches and pitchforks, I guess, because I just don't understand Dark Souls. Um, <laughs> I have tried to get into it multiple times, and maybe I'll give it another go again sometime, but, like, I just don't get why the idea of taking two or three hits to die, and once you do, either, depending on the game, having your health sliced in half, or being sent back, like, 15 minutes to deal with the same, like, monsters you've already dealt with as a punishment, is fun. It just does not sound fun. I like the gameplay itself. I like how sort of like uh, slow and methodical it is compared to something like Bayonetta or God of War or Devil May Cry or something like that. It's a slower, more methodical action RPG. But just how everything just two or three hits you. It, it like it might also be due to the fact that I do sort of have trouble with uh, comprehension, pattern recognition, that sort of thing. Like I've played Dark Souls 3, the first boss gave me so much trouble that I just quit straight up. Like I think I made it to the second phase and at that point I was just like, how is this the first boss? How am I supposed to deal with this? I cannot, I cannot read his attacks. He kills me in two or three hits. I just do not get it. I don't, I cannot get it. And I don't understand why people like it. But it's not my position, obviously, to say, why do you people like this? You should stop playing this. People enjoy it, obviously. It sells millions of copies. So, obviously, I wouldn't necessarily say I'm in the wrong. I just don't get it. Would you ever consider streaming? Um, this is a question I get, like, pretty much every time I do a QA, and a and the answer is pretty much the exact same as it was last time. I would love to, but I am very socially awkward and anxious, and that holds me back a lot. <laughs> One day I'd love to, and especially in this day and age where everybody has a VTuber avatar, like, I would love a Remy VTuber. That would make me so fucking happy. Like, mmm. But, yeah, like... I don't know. One day, hopefully, yes. Um, probably not anytime soon. If I wanted to do it, I would probably wait until I move and get my own place. What's the weirdest film you saw in theaters? I haven't seen a lot of films in theaters. Uh, like, I guess, um, I don't know, Toy Story 2, Avengers, It, um, Prometheus, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets off the top of my head, I guess, those I've seen. And none of them are really that weird, so I don't know. <laughs> Thoughts on Pavlova? I'd fuck it. Does having a rack sonar mean you're messy IRL? 
<laughs> I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> Do you need a traumatic event to trigger the transformation into a furry? No, no, you just have to give the animal you want to become um, a smooch. Just a little peck on the cheek, just a little mwah, you know, just like that. What is your favorite Doritos flavor? Can't go wrong with Cheese Supreme. Though we don't get a lot of Dorito flavors here, so there could be some cool flavor that I'm missing out, but we really only get like Cheese Supreme, Nacho Cheese, uh, occasionally Cool Ranch, and Original, and Mexicana. Actually, Mexicana's pretty good too. But anyway, give us more flavors, you fucks. How have you and I only known about Beat Hazard? That's a bloody amazing game. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it's like, it's pretty good. It's, I'm surprised it's not more popular than it is. Um, for those people who don't know, it's like a, um, a uh, twin stick shooter where the levels are automatically generated based on what music you feed into it and it's kind of repetitive but at the same time it's something i just jump on to every now and then and just smash out if i'm bored it's like it's not bad you know though it's a shame that beat has a 2 will just not launch on my computer whatsoever well actually it will launch but once i start loading music it just crashes because i guess i have too much music apparently if you could experience one game for the first time again which one would it be and why uh i guess the easy answer is breath of the wild i genuinely loved exploring that world and I wish I could do it again without the knowledge of where everything is. Will we see the long-awaited return of the Aran Express? No, Aran is dead. Is your raccoon OC snuggleable? If so, can my big strong angel pony thing snuggle them? Five bucks a snug. <laughs> I'm gonna make money somehow, come on. Alright, so what's the favorite part of being a YouTuber? I guess the cliche answer would be something like, you know, um, entertaining people and having also built up such a fucking awesome community such as you guys uh which yes that's definitely one of my favorite parts but also it's nice to just work and choose my own hours like obviously this isn't my job yet um i've still got a lot i've still got a long way to go before that is a reality but it's just nice being able to choose my own hours and sit down and work on stuff in my own free time and when i do work on stuff it it's fun you know like jobs suck but Doing stuff for YouTube, sometimes it can suck, most of the time it doesn't, and that's kind of the sort of thing I'd want to do in life. Something enjoyable, I don't want to toil away at a desk, I want <clears throat> to toil away at a desk, I guess. <laughs> Any ideas for deck start review in the future? Mm, never watched it personally, um, I heard the last season was a bit shit, so no, I get what you mean. <laughs> I actually have a full script written for Daxter. I'm assuming you mean Daxter and not the show. <laughs> but yeah, I've got a full script written for it. I'm not sure exactly when I'm going to do it. I just got to sort of find um, a slot in my schedule to do it, I guess, because I'm just a little backed up with other projects right now. Dear Remy, how do you type with big raccoon paws on? On? Are you implying this is a suit? Nah, man, I'm the real thing. Heck, I'll prove it. Listen to me chitter. Are you going to become a VTuber fairy like other Tigray Tiger? Mm, I don't know. You should definitely try. I would love a VTuber uh, avatar thing of Remy, like I said in a previous question. Purely because, um, I don't know who this Tiger or Tigre or whatever person is, but um, I follow uh, Chrissium, who's got that adorable little otter avatar, Chester. I just... Ah, uh, I melt when I see him. I want to wrap his cheek. Yo, Ren, what anime other than Gurren Lagann have you watched? I have not watched anime in about a year at this point, maybe not a year, maybe like 9 or 10 months or something. Like the last thing I watched was uh, BNA, which makes a lot of sense to me. Ooh, uh, fucking fairy TF anime, obviously that's going to be my thing, but I just sort of lost interest about halfway through because um, I'm just not sure if I enjoyed as much as I used to. But maybe that's just because anime these days just doesn't appeal to me, like some of my favourite anime are sort of older ones, like stuff like... Um, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, uh, um, Steins Gate, Space Dandy, uh, Code Geass, Welcome to the NHK, stuff like that, a little bit from, like, a, a little bit of popular stuff, a little bit of stuff that not many people know, stuff like that, but, like, yeah, I don't know, anime these days just does not appeal to me, like, the last thing I fully watched was Fire Force, which was alright, but it was just... <sighs> I don't know, a lot of anime just feels the same these days. It's either the usual shonen schlock, or just super, like, fucking moe bullshit. Well, not bullshit, I like moe, but I don't know. Once you've seen one anime from a season, you've just sort of seen them all, I guess. And especially true if you don't like isekai. Like, if you don't like isekai stuff, you just, you shit out of luck. My only question for Remy is this. Watch more from Maccas, I'm doing a run. Angus Clubhouse meal with a vanilla shake. And if you bring back any McFucking nuggets from that McFucking McStore, I'll McRip your McFucking head off. I'm sorry, is that too rude? <laughs> Fuck those nuggets, man. I hate them. They're so bad. They're rocks. They're just little meaty rocks. 
Have you played any Souls game? If yes, which, and did you have fun? Well, as I said in a previous question, I have tried Dark Souls numerous times. I have tried one, I've tried two, I've tried three, I've tried Bloodborne. Uh, I didn't mind Sekiro, even though I'm still not uh, a fan of, you know, retrying the same boss multiple times over. I think the one I've enjoyed the most is Neo, and if I'm going to get back into it, it might be that game, just because of the sheer amount of options you have in combat. But otherwise, it's just, I guess it's just not a genre that appeals to me, and that really sucks because I like the combat, but just everything else around it just does not work for me. Favorite video game weapon that isn't from Ratchet & Clank? Um, I should have thought about this earlier, but uh, off the top of my head, I really like the shotgun from Wolfenstein The New Order, the one where um, the alternate fire just has like this, um, I don't know, I can't remember exactly what it's called, it's like this bouncy shrapnel shit where like, if you shoot a wall, it's the, the bullets are just gonna like bounce off the wall and just ricochet a whole bunch of times until they eventually find the enemy and just rip them to shreds and I think that's really fucking cool. What got you into automotive games? Um, my dad, I guess. My dad was, uh, he was really big into Gran Turismo and, um, I think he also had Ridge Racer back when we were a kid. Like, he had this whole fucking, like, hi-fi stereo setup and, like, a wheel and everything for it just for Gran Turismo, which mum wasn't too impressed about. <laughs> My dad, um, he's not a great person. I actually haven't talked to him for years and I'm totally fine with that fact, but I will at least thank him for getting me into racing games because they're very much a big part of who I am today. And uh, just like, yeah, <laughs> that's pretty much it. It was just watching my dad play Gran Turismo when I was like five or six or seven or however old I was when it came out. Have you played any of the Burnout series? I've played every Burnout except uh, the original and I love every single one except Paradise and um, I guess Crash. Crash doesn't really count, does it? <laughs> Two is really great. Three is fucking fantastic. One of my favorite games ever made. Revenge, I have not played far enough to be able to judge, but I still really, really enjoy it in any way. And uh, if I sit here and talk about Paradise, we're going to be here all day, but I just don't really like the whole, uh, like, I like the open world. I just don't like how it's raced from point A to point B with no, like, designated routes in between because I like, uh, the thing I like about Three and Revenge is that race uh, and dominator i always forget about dominator dominator is fucking good um i like how everyone's sharing the same track and you get as many opportunities for takedowns as possible but when you split that up in an open world where anyone can take any route they want then suddenly you just don't get those opportunities anymore and also i just kind of want to focus on going as fast as possible and dodging traffic not choosing which way i have to go it just doesn't feel like burnout like it's a good game it's just it's not a good burnout game Pineapple on pizza or not? You know, I've sort of flipped my opinion on this. I don't mind it. It's not my first choice. I won't rush down to the local pizzeria to pick up a Hawaiian pizza, but if I'm offered a, uh, a slice of Hawaiian, I'll, I'll eat it. Which is more beautiful? The shock cannon from Ouya or the blitz cannon from Going Commando? The pixelizer. Next question. How do you get your fur so silky smooth? Oh, those bin juices do wonders for my coat. Would you fight God Persona style to become a trash god? I am the trash god. What are some games you'd like to see get remastered? Um, Dragon Quest VIII would be my immediate answer because that game's either stuck on a very old console that not a lot of people have access to or it's stuck on the 3DS where it's simultaneously better and worse off. So I'd love to see a HD port where they grab, you know, all the stuff from the 3DS version and cram it into like this really pretty looking version for the PS5 and Xbox Series X and PC and stuff like that. You've been experimenting a lot with animation as of late. Are you ever going to make a little animation of Remy dancing or something for an intro or an outro? Or maybe to put in the bottom left corner if you ever stream? Also, do you- mm, fucking god. <laughs> I think I was getting a little bit too ambitious with those, uh, I'd hesitate to call them animations, they're much closer to animatics, and even then, not much of them was actually moving, but animation is definitely something I'm going to experiment with, but I'm probably going to practice with it before I do any more. So, for the time being, I'm probably not going to do a lot. I might make something like that for an outro screen or something like that, but like I've said uh, numerous times, the goal is to be able to get to a point where I can make little animated skits for most of my reviews. And for now, I just don't think my um, artistic talent is far enough along to be able to do that consistently. So for now, yeah, don't expect them. Maybe sometimes you'll get them, but for the most part, yeah, nah, it's just gonna be those stills of Remy. As a kid, what was your biggest challenge growing up? Well, you not letting me touch your fries, for one. Honest answer though, it was autism. Um, I'm not sure how many people are actually aware of this. I think I, uh, did reveal it back when I reviewed Owlboy, but I do, um, 
I was about to say suffer from autism, but no. I have been diagnosed with autism and I have learned to live with it, but it has come with its struggles. Like, especially when I was a kid, um, I had massive comprehension issues. Like, if I read instructions, it would probably take me, uh, depending on the task, a couple of times to read over it to really be able to get it. And even nowadays, like just sitting down and playing games, I still feel that affect me quite a lot. Like if you were to enter a room in uh, like a first person shooter or something, and you clear out all the enemies and you think, okay, uh, where do we go next? Um, most of you would probably be able to find that quite easily, whereas me, because I have pretty poor comprehension skills and pattern recognition, it takes me a lot longer. What's your take on modern racing games like 4 to 7 and Dirt 5, and how do they compare to old games like Need for Speed Most Wanted, etc.? Racing games these days are sometimes the absolute best of the genre, and sometimes just so completely and utterly bland and void of any character. Like. I have my own views on Dirt 5, which I won't reveal now because I'm actually doing a review on it, but stuff like that, uh, other recent games like uh, Project Cars 3, a couple of the Forza games, there's just kind of something missing with them, and like even though I'll sit down and play something like Forza 7 and I'll enjoy my time with it, it just, there's something, um, I don't know if soulless is the word, but I don't know, even compared to like not even 10 years ago with stuff like Forza 3 and 4 and even earlier back than that with stuff like Need for Speed and Juiced and Gran Turismo and a whole bunch of other games, Midnight Club, around that time that just had so much flair and character and just, I don't know, there is a lot of that lacking in racing games right now. Also, none of them seem to offer any sort of satisfying car collecting experience, which is really disappointing. I hope um, uh, Test Drive solar crown delivers on that because no game right now is delivering on that did you ever play the og rayman trilogy my extent of my experience with the original rayman trilogy is i played rayman 2 on my dad's girlfriend's pc back when i was like i don't know 14 or 15 or something and that is literally it <laughs> I'd definitely love to go back and experience them sometime though. Did you ever fix that guitar? No, it is still broken. And uh, instead of going to get it fixed, I went and bought another one and it broke too. <laughs> Which game has the best OST in your opinion? My answer is always going to be Undertale. That that game resonates with me a lot and the soundtrack just elevates it so much further. Like, uh, I really like how it makes me feel nostalgic, even though it's only been out for, what, five and a half years at this point. Like, even a year after I'd played it, I still felt like really nostalgic, like listening to uh, Hopes and Dreams and the the title theme undertale itself and stuff like that honorable mentions go to uh like pokemon mystery dungeon explorers of sky um yakuza zero very quickly climbed up my rankings that that soundtrack is fucking great um and i realize this would be cheating but uh i guess super smash brothers ultimate as well <laughs> when playing a game what's the main thing you're invested in the story the gameplay the soundtrack um Gameplay first and foremost, but at the same time it sort of depends on the game, like something like, um, I don't know, The Last of Us, I wouldn't play because it's like a mechanically deep game or anything, it's definitely not, but where it's let down in the gameplay department, everything else elevates it so much further, the story, the visuals, uh, at times the soundtrack as well. So it, yeah, it does sort of depend on the game, but if the gameplay doesn't hook me, then there's a very good chance that I'm just not gonna put up with it. Though having said that, I think I have a pretty high tolerance for what would be considered, uh, I guess like mediocre gameplay. Like I wouldn't call um, Yakuza mediocre, but its combat system definitely isn't like the best thing out there or anything. It's very simple. It's in that case, it's definitely the story that's sort of bolstering it up for me and the soundtrack as well. and sort of everything else, well most everything else around and I'm admittedly not a big fan of like getting 100% on these games because it takes like 150 hours or something. <laughs> but yeah, gameplay first, everything else can help, but yeah. What's your favorite console? Your. Actual answer, um, Xbox 360, I think it has, um, I think it's a combination of having, um, you know, like all the Forza games on it, like, and also a whole bunch of other stuff that I greatly enjoy as well, Lost Odyssey, things like that. But also just having a really nice controller, um, like a really good feature set as well. I really appreciate the custom soundtrack feature and it actually works on almost every game, unlike the PS3. But yeah, I just, I always find playing the 360 to be really pleasant, which is kind of weird to say. It just, I don't know, it has a really good games library. The controller is comfy. Just, yeah. What made you decide to send all the Ratchet and Clank games after doing the original Ill Up Your Arsenal? Your. You said in Eraw Up Your Arsenal that the original was just an April Fool's joke, so what made you decide to continue? People enjoyed it. 
that that's pretty much it, you know? <laughs> it was only going to be an April Fool's thing, then people started watching it, and uh, I guess two different mindsets. One, I could use this to get more views. I do slightly regret that, but oh well. Two, people enjoyed it, and I guess that pushed me to make more to take the series further. Nowadays, I'm not that easily bullyable into making a series just because people enjoy it. I would much rather do stuff that I enjoy, but at the same time, it was just a really good feeling to know that people were enjoying my stuff and wanted to see more. So I just kind of went with the flow, I guess. How did you get the confidence to become open about your furry side? I don't know, it just happened one day. <laughs> I'd been a furry for years, I just hadn't talked about it to pretty much anyone, so... But yeah, I don't know, I think it just sort of happened one day, like, uh, the... I think I've talked about this before, but the Twitter account for Billy Bust Up, an, unco uh, blah, 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 an upcoming 3D platformer with a goat, um, made a tweet that was like, if you see this tweet, you're a goat now, and so I drew Vale as a goat, and just sort of went from there. Also, any thoughts on Crash 4? I know I'm answering two questions here that I know that's cheating, but I did not enjoy it. On one hand, the 100% requirements are a total load of bullshit, and I know you don't have to go for 100%, but I almost consider it sort of like a core part of the Crash experience. Like, in the previous games, you'd play the 25 levels, and it's like, okay, cool, that was like three or four hours of time killed. But most of the fun is going back and finding all the boxes and crystals and stuff like that, and gems and whatever else. Whereas here, it's more like, it's, it's, a, it's a chore. Like, there's so much bullshit. And you know, I wouldn't even mind that much uh, if they got rid of whatever it was called, like the perfect relics, where you have to get all six gems or whatever in one go. I wouldn't mind if I just went for each gem individually and then the game said, oh, okay, cool, that's the game finished, that's fine. That, that, that would be a lot of content. It would be repetitive, but it would be something that I could like come back to every now and then. But instead, the requirements are just a load of bullshit. And on top of that, I just didn't really like how the game controlled either. I don't know, like, somehow Crash and Coco were just really stiff to me. I didn't really like how when you started running, there was like this like brief pause. I don't know if there was an actual pause or anything, but the animation made it look like there was, and it made everything just feel a lot more stiff than it really needed to be, and like, I don't mind how the second jump slows you down because it encourages you to try and rely on a single jump, but in general, I don't know, it's it's one of those games that made me think that I had to push the buttons or the left analog stick harder than I actually needed to, even though I didn't, even though I knew I didn't need to, it just felt like that. And I don't, I, it, it's really hard to explain, but I just, I, I didn't enjoy it as much as everyone else. Being a fan of Final Fantasy X that you are, have you ever thought about doing a review of its sequel X2? Please, no, I beg of you, do not ask for this. What's a video game you would want to see as an animated series that hasn't been done yet? How about, um, Borderlands? Like, I don't know, maybe, maybe take like the style of Invincible or something and apply it to Borderlands. I don't know. I, I think it could make a pretty good, um, animated series. Probably a lot better than a live action movie starring fucking Jack Black anyway. Why is he claptrap? What next? We're going to cast fucking, I don't know, Dan Cook as Lilith? If someone were to pick up your old Sinning series, would you stop them? Well, it's not really my series, I guess. It's just, you know, pretty much a copy of CinemaSins, but with gaming, so. Well, <laughs> I don't know, I didn't really, like, invent anything. I more or less just took Cinema Sins and Cinema Wins and applied both of those to video gaming. So, you know, I, I wouldn't say yes or no because I don't think it's really my place to say so. If you want to make everything right and wrong with stuff, whatever, go for it, you know? Did you ever have any ideas for Remy? Like, making cyborg pieces or making them like a mythical raccoon? Remy with a bionic arm would be Pog. But like, otherwise, I don't know, I don't really have like any other ideas for them at the moment. I'm mostly just, uh, like I tried the shape-shifting stuff, which I got rid of, um, and I'm just keeping the whole pocket tail thing for now, and, uh, yeah, I don't know, like, Remy will probably evolve as we go along. Um, who knows exactly how, but we'll just have to wait and see. Hey dude, how do you draw your art in your videos? I'd like to learn how. Alright, bear with me here. Um, so, for my art, I have an iPad Mini, I think it's the fifth generation, and I use an Apple Pencil, and I draw everything with the, um, Procreate app. I'm not sure exactly exactly how like in depth you want me to go here so I'm just gonna like I don't know brush over some quick stuff that I do so uh here's my drawing process um I draw a circle for the head I draw like a cross section thing through it so I can determine where the eyes and nose and mouth and stuff are gonna be and then I just go from there <laughs> I, I usually don't do like any other not many other shapes or, or anything like that I just kind of sort of wing it or I'll have a reference of Remy on the side of the screen at the same time but otherwise yeah bad practice I know I do just kind of wing it I should not do that <laughs> sometimes I use some other little techniques though like um for example when I want to draw arms I'll draw uh like a T shape and the end of the top of the T is like 
the position of the shoulder and the hand. And for hands themselves, hands are still really hard for me, but something I find uh, helps me quite a lot is imagining the palm as, uh, I guess like a piece of toast would be the easiest way to explain it. That's the thing about art, it's, it's at least to me, it's about breaking stuff down into shapes. So instead of looking at Remy and going, oh, they're a raccoon, I'm going to draw a raccoon, I look at uh, individual parts and think what sort of shapes they are, I guess. I'm not any sort of art tutorial person, so I can't really go any more in depth than that because the way I draw is stupid and fucked, but yeah, um, I draw out the sketch, then I do a uh, line art layer, and, uh, well, this is probably also sort of fucked as well, I create another layer, which is the outline of some of the uh, coloured shapes, like, say, Remy's mask, or the rings around their tail, or the chevron on their uh, hoodie. And then the line art layer gets merged down on top of that, and then I turn that layer into a reference layer and then make another layer underneath so that I can just uh, grab colors, drop them into the spaces I need them to and fill them in. But for each pose, I also have like dozens of different expressions for each one. So for that, what I usually do is I don't draw a mouth on immediately and I put the eyes in a different layer so that I can move them around freely later on. In fact, usually what I'll do is I'll just create different positions for the eyes and uh, just have them as different layers so that I can toggle them on and on freely, uh, on and off freely rather. And then I'll make like a new layer on top of everything. I'll draw a specific mouth shape that I want, like a smile or a frown or just a regular closed mouth or something like that. If the mouth's open, I'll make a new layer underneath that to uh, like color in the tongue and the inside of the mouth. And then on top of all that, I'll also make uh, a couple of new layers for different expressions around the eyes. So like lowering the eyebrows or raising them or shutting the eyes entirely, stuff like that. Angry expressions, uh, etc., etc. And then I'll just sort of like toggle through the different um, eyebrow and eyelid expressions and the different eye positions for uh, each mouth shape and I'll export them as different um, different images and then they all get uploaded to the iCloud where I download them and put them into uh, different folders so that I can easily access them. I'll also individually name uh, each picture so that I know what I'm looking for. So if I want um, Remy with their arms crossed but also smiling or uh, whatever, I'll specifically name a picture that. It'll be like uh, Remy arms crossed smiling one, Remy arms crossed smiling two, so on and so forth. So I can just very quickly at a glance find the picture I need. And that's basically it. Um, I didn't mean to delve into a full-on art tutorial or anything, but that's that's pretty much my fucked method of drawing Remy. <laughs> Any thoughts on the newest Hell of a Boss episode? I have not seen Hell of a Boss at all yet, but Luna's fucking adorable. Do you think you'll talk about Celeste in the near future? Like I've said before, I don't usually um, plan out games that I talk about too far in advance, so... Whether I talk about Celeste or not, I don't know. I wouldn't mind actually talking about it though, because it, um... Well, it's a fun game, obviously, but it also does explore a lot of issues that I myself personally experience, and I think that might be quite interesting to talk about, but otherwise, at the moment, no idea. Also, more tier lists, please. Oh, you're in for a heck of a surprise soon. I remember you mentioning you got into the Yakuza series through Zero a short while ago in one of your <coughs> recent videos. Have you tried going deeper into the series? If so, do you have any strong positive or negative opinions of the series so far? As of recording, um, just a couple of days ago, I finished Yakuza Zero, fantastic game loved it like even though i have my issues with it the combat system is kind of simple and repetitive some of the sub story stuff i could do without some of the mini games i don't want to sit there and grind for ages mahjong fuck off do not talk to me ever again but otherwise i really enjoyed it and i'm definitely in it for the long haul i um just started uh, yakuza kiwami a couple of days ago as well like pretty much the day straight after finishing Zero. And on one hand, I'm glad that it's basically just more Yakuza Zero, so it's really easy to assimilate into, and it kind of just feels like, oh, I really enjoyed Zero, cool, I get more of it. But at the same time, these bosses, I fucking hate these bosses. Because like, in some ways, they're copies of the original um, PS2 version, but at the same time, I don't know what was going through the dev's head when they decided that they would just be the exact same boss uh, the exact same super armor boss, uh, let's block 100% of the time and fucking just react with undodgeable punches. But then at the same time, whereas say for example, uh, the first boss battle against uh, Shimano, um, he, uh, why did they like triple his health? It takes like two minutes to kill him in the PS2 version, which is f like with the super armor constantly blocking bullshit, Fine, okay, whatever, at least it's over in the blink of an eye. This time it takes like fucking 
seven, eight, nine, ten minutes to do. It's so bad. <laughs> And it's a shame because everything else about it is so fucking good. It's just, these games are fun. It's just, oh, Kiwami's bosses, man, fuck. But yeah, I am definitely in it for the long haul. I am slightly disappointed that apparently Zero and maybe Six are the pinnacle of the series. So for a little while, I'm going to be playing um, basically inferior games gameplay wise. I've heard some not great stuff about 3, but I'm still really curious to see how it goes, and even if I get angry at some of the bosses and stuff like that sometimes, and even if I don't want to like finish absolutely everything, something just like always pulls me back in, whether it's like the, the really cool story, whether it's Majima showing up at random points in the game, fucking, you know, like the creative ways he tries to make uh, Kiryu fight him. I don't know man, they're really fun games, and honestly I just can't wait to get through them all, really. Can we see all the art you've done of Remy? I have too much art, I would not be able to show it here. <laughs> I do, um, well actually I should probably get into a better habit of this, but I do upload, and will upload, uh, most of my art to Fur Affinity and DeviantArt, and maybe in the future Newgrounds as well. So if you ever want to check it out, you can just search up Remy Raccoon on there. Since you're a fan of racing games, what are your top three circuits from any racing games that you've played? Uh, okay, um, Maple Valley from Forza Motorsport. I'm a pretty big sucker for that uh, sort of fall autumn aesthetic. Midfield Raceway from Gran Turismo. Not really a lot to say about this one. I just find that it's a really fun track to race around. And Lervency Ring from Enthusia Professional Racing. It That probably is my favorite circuit straight up. It's a genuinely fun circuit to drive around to begin with, but also that music, that atmosphere. Mm. Would you rather never play games again or never watch anime again? I have not watched anime in about 9 or 10 months, so that's a pretty easy answer. Will we see a review to Hollow Knight? I want to see your full opinion on it. Again, don't know if I ever would, but also again, yeah, that would be kind of fun to do. If you could revive a franchise, which one would it be and why? Drive Club got fucking shafted and it is so sad. There is a very good video by, uh, I think it was White Light, that, um, that he did on Drive Club that just basically sums up my thoughts perfectly. I wouldn't mind reviewing it, but at the same time, I would probably just be regurgitating exactly what he said about it, but in uh, a significantly less refined way. <laughs> but yeah, um, I figure that uh, if I were asked this question, people would expect me to say something like Sly or Jack 4, but at the same time, eh. I think Jack ended fine, even if we don't consider like Jack X, Daxter, and The Lost Frontier. And at the same time, I don't really think that we need to be always looking back at old franchises who've already had a bunch of games and say we need more of that sometimes it's just to it's best to just let sleeping dogs lie you know i i think jack was fine and um if we get a jack four cool great awesome but at the same time i think i'd want to see naughty dog or whoever else just work on new stuff new account who dis hi i'm remy i killed Vale. they're in my basement Want to go out for Mountain Dew slushies? I think Criterion is remastering Most Wanted 2012 next year. What do you have to say about this? I've seen absolutely nothing on this topic at all whatsoever. But at the same time, I sincerely hope they don't because there are so many other Need for Speed games much more deserving of a remaster. Most Wanted, uh, I do overplay my hate towards it quite a bit. It's more or less a Burnout Paradise situation where I think the game is good, but it's not a very good Need for Speed game. And at, But at the same time, I would rather see something like the original Most Wanted, or Underground 2, or more of an attempt to actually recapture that same spirit from those old games instead of just bringing back the old games. What are your five least favorite or most hated Ratchet and Clank weapons? Stuff like the, uh, I guess, you know, like the Clank Zapper, the Taunter, the Decoy Glove, uh, very easy answers, but also stuff like the Mutator, which I think is genuinely one of the worst weapons, uh, one of the worst, like, regular weapons in the Ratchet and Clank series because it's basically just the Morpho Ray but unusable. And the Hollow Shield Glove from Up Your Arsenal because on one hand Ratchet and Clank is all about like movement and you know jumping around dodging bullets staying on the move the whole time it's kind of like you know a, like a kid-friendly doom. So I think while maybe a shield weapon has its place in the series and I think the Hollow Shield Launcher is a good example of that the Hollow Shield Glove specifically is absolutely like awful almost unusable it does not last as long as it should it like you pop it out in front of basically any enemy they shoot it at two times and it just disappears so there's no point of sitting behind it and just hiding behind it and sniping people from far away which would make the whatever the sniper rifle in uyu is the flux rifle or whatever that would make that useful but no it just disappears in two hits so it it's fucking pointless
If there was a game that you wanted to improve, what game would it be and what would you change in it? There would be so many games I could pick for this. Um, like I could take Ratchet and Clank 2016 and improve the writing and the humor, or I could take uh, Forza Horizon 4, I could improve the single player offering of that because as it is, it's total shit. I could take uh, Wolfenstein the New Colossus and not make every enemy a fucking bullet sponge and not make you take 80 points every time you get shot by hitscan weapons. And I would do the same for Blood. Uh, the those fucking hit scan cultists are annoying as all hell and otherwise dampen what's almost a perfect game, honestly. Or stuff like Bell and Wonderworld, where actually I won't spoil my um, my opinions on that yet. <laughs> How weird do you think it'll be to review Rift Apart without the E-Raw mindset? Do you think that this is a fresh opportunity for your channel, or do you think things will be slightly off? I personally can't see how anything would be really off, I guess. And while I think it's definitely going to be a little bit weird talking about Ratchet and Clank in a format that isn't <coughs> shit. <coughs> I don't think it's going to be that bad. If anything, I'm really excited. I would love to just be able to sit down and talk about Ratchet and Clank normally without looking at every cutscene and going, oh, that's a fucking continuity error. Fucking ding. But yeah, no, I'm honestly really excited to just talk about it normally, you know? What's your favorite Ratchet and Clank weapon? The motherfucking spiral of carnage. I would scream it, but there are neighbors everywhere and there is a roommate on the other side of the wall and I do not want to. <laughs> <laughs> Help me, I'm shy. Which Ratchet & Clank original trilogy OST was your favorite? Ooh, um, as good as the original game's OST was, I think there's a few tracks in 3 that really just sort of edge it out for me. Like, um, the, uh, the Dox miniboss on Dax, um, planet, is it Chorus? The, the second last planet. I really love the music that plays in the first half of that. The remixes of returning tracks as well are pretty good. Mostly, I just, I really like the vibe of the soundtrack. It's, uh, as the kids would call, fucking epic. Can I please be allowed to be back in your server? Kiss my toes and I'll think about it. What do you think about the Sly games? Have you ever played them? And if yes, have you thought about making a video on them or something? I don't know if I answered this earlier in the video because this is getting really long, but yes, I'm definitely going to be doing uh, something Sly related in the future. It's just um, writing the script was kind of difficult. Uh, as it turns out, writing scripts for anything that people have already reviewed a million times over is kind of difficult without making it sound like it's the same thing just being regurgitated again, which is why I also haven't really done anything with Kingdom Hearts either. But uh, I have plans for that. I'm just, I am just having trouble committing them to paper, I guess. But yes, definitely in the future. What are your favorite games from your childhood? Um, well, obviously there's like stuff that I've talked about a billion times before, like Ratchet and Clank and Gran Turismo and uh, uh, Dragon Quest VIII as well. Um, but on the more obscure side of things, um, I do remember really liking uh, sitting down with my dad and playing Siphon Filter on the PS1 and Roll Cage as well, which I don't really have uh, much of a memory of, but I do remember really liking that as a kid. Uh, I still have my memory card from when I was like 14 or 15 with my completed save games of uh, Final Fantasy 12 and Midnight Club 3, which uh, the former of which I think I spent like 150 hours on. So. Uh, I guess that's definitely going to count for something. <laughs> Why are you so great? Compliments will not be tolerated. Will you play the next Pokemon game? And are you a fan of the franchise as a whole, as in the main games? Or do you think the formula has aged and should need to... <sighs> change a little? Ha 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 ha, so funny you got the whole squad laughing. Ha 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 Jokes aside, I think I'm still a Pokemon fan. But yeah, I would like to see some <clears throat> change for the upcoming Pokemon games. Which I know we're not really going to get unless we look at spin-offs like the Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remake I'm going to be completely honest they just sort of do not interest me that much I might get them if only because it's um, an opportunity to talk about Pokemon on the channel which is what I've wanted to do for a while but at the same time these games are literally just the DS game like just remade in fucking like I don't know full 3d everything's still chibi everything is the exact same layout boring like, just straight up, boring. You have the opportunity to remake the game, and you just make it the exact same. Why? Why do that? And I know there are games that I love that do that exact same thing, like the Spyro Reignited trilogy, but it's just... It's like... The point of a remake should be to bring a game into the modern age, not just make the exact same thing. And Spyro is more of the former, in my opinion, whereas this game... Why would I want to play it when I already have Platinum? on my DS, you know? But then there's also Pokemon Arceus, which looks interesting, but at the same time, that trailer was kind of shit. <laughs> like, you know, with like Pokemon moving at three or four FPS and 
there's just not enough to go on and it does look kind of ugly at the moment and it's coming out next year apparently so there's probably still a lot of time for improvement but I said that about Sword and Shield and that didn't improve at all. I know we're not allowed to make fun of that tree anymore but that tree... <laughs> But I'm still a massive idiot, I'll still probably buy Pokemon games as they come out, just because I want to see, you know, if they improve or not. And I don't really expect them to because they are sort of, you know, made for kids, and I guess that sort of RPG system is good for kids. But, you know, there's still just, it feels like there's so much more they could be doing. Like, they put voice acting into Pokemon Tournament and new Pokemon Snap, why don't the main series games have it? Why? It just baffles me that the main series just feels like it was made on a budget of like two dollars when the spin-offs seem to get a much bigger budget like the mystery dungeon games look really goddamn good the new pokemon snap is just absolutely gorgeous and then you got uh sword and shield and it looks like an indie game from 2012. but yeah while i would make changes to the core gameplay system itself like the one-on-one -on -one battles honestly don't interest me as much as they used to they're just not exactly very mechanically satisfying i can live with that because it's still built around the pretty addicting like gameplay of actually collecting pokemon and naming them and raising them and stuff like that but just everything else around it is so like either dull or underdeveloped. Why is wrong spelt wrong in the dictionary? No, it's not, you fucking idiot. It's spelt right, you du- Wait, but if it's spelt right, then it's wrong. But if it's spelt wrong, then it's right. But then, oh, oh, my tiny raccoon brain was not built for this. No help. You like jazz? I think I got asked this last time and the answer is still the same. Yes, I love jazz. Go listen to Insane in the Rain music. When did you discover that you were in the NB community? Has discovering it affected you in a positive way? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I came out as non-binary in I think it was uh, August 2019, but I did sort of have thoughts about it way earlier than that, which I talked about earlier in the video, like how I was, um, you know, discovering whether or not I was trans, whether I wanted to, um, you know transition that sort of stuff and i sort of came to that realization probably about a month prior before i eventually just said fuck it i'm gonna tell everyone you know and it has definitely helped like like i said i'm still not doing super great or anything but it has definitely helped with like my confidence my um ability to or, or want to try new things that sort of stuff and at least right now i think i wouldn't have it any other way will you start a let's play channel no <laughs> Or rather, I don't really have any plans to do so right now. I did have a Let's Play channel um, some time ago, which again, I think I talked about earlier. And it was fun at first, but at the same time, it's a lot of effort to keep up with, especially like even if you just go for a, like a single video every now and then, it's still a lot to keep up with. But I was doing two or three videos a day and that really burnt me out and sort of put me off from doing Let's Plays for, I don't know, for the foreseeable future at least. So if I do anything like that, it's probably gonna be streaming. How do you feel about Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart? Um, it still, for me personally, has a bit to prove. Uh, looking at gameplay, it looks absolutely fantastic. It looks like um, Ratchet and Clank 2016, which I personally thought at its absolute core is the pinnacle of the series, just like in terms of gameplay. It looks to just be expanding on that even further. Um, even if it feels like it's adding stuff that's been done in a lot of games before, like, you know, those new, tra uh, blah, 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 those new traversal mechanics, the... Um, the dash mechanic which I never thought Ratchet and Clank needed because you've got like you know strafing side flips back flips that sort of stuff which works really well and looks cool when you're trying to dodge you know um enemy fire and all that but it still looks like it's really fun and the weapons look really cool too and I don't know I'm really excited to actually just sit down and play it but the story still has a lot to prove for me like listening to some of that dialogue um from the couple of previews we've had it still seems like it's just in that weird uh like i don't know it's hard to explain it's not quite like as cringy as 2016 per se but it just just from what we've seen it just doesn't seem like there's a lot of um i can't think of the word fuck i don't know just the dialogue is just rubbing me the wrong way at the moment and i am also a little bit concerned that maybe it'll focus a little bit too much on you know planets we've already been to characters we've already met before when like it's been what, uh, when was nexus 2013 it's been eight years since the last uh proper ratchet and clank game even if that one was short but it was still a new game with new content new characters new weapons stuff like that 
and while we're getting some new stuff in uh, Rift Apart, it's it's still, I'm, I'm just not a huge fan of how it seems to be retreading a lot of old ground. But who knows, maybe I'll sit down and I'll play it and I'll really enjoy the story and I'll really fucking enjoy the gameplay and I won't even care in the end. I'm just, yeah, I'm cautiously optimistic. Have you played LEGO games? If you have, then what's your favourite? I have played quite a few LEGO games in my time. I really enjoy them as a kid. Nowadays, they are extremely boring. Um, I'm sort of interested in trying LEGO City Undercover because I really like the writing style and humour that I've seen from a few cutscenes and Let's Plays. But the gameplay just doesn't really appeal to me that much. Like, you die and you just respawn in the same spot and you, like, just solve puzzles and mash the attack button of people and, you know, win, I guess. It's... It's basically just Ratchet and Clank all for one. Wow, I just realized that. <laughs> so I'm going to cheat a little bit and say my favorite LEGO game is LEGO Rock Band because it's just, you know, Rock Band. I love Rock Band and it's LEGO and it's cool. And it even just, even though it's just Rock Band, it automatically wins, but it's also actually got a lot of um, legs up over Rock Band. Like, um, I love how, you know, you make your characters and they just get inserted into these really fun little cutscenes and you get to make your own albums and customize your space and... I don't know, there's a lot of stuff about LEGO Rock Band that's actually better than the other Rock Band games. Though at the same time, it'll be too soon if I ever hear Check Yes Juliet ever again. Favorite things to put on pizza? There's a pizza I like to make sometimes, which is just, um, uh, oh shit, what is it? I get, uh, shredded roast chicken, I throw, you know, um, little bits of feta, some olives, uh, sun-dried tomato if I have that laying around, maybe some pepperoni if I have that too. Throw some cheese over the top, I'm pretty sure I'm missing an ingredient because I feel like there's, oh, mushrooms as well, I think. It's a very, it's a very, um, it's a very busy pizza, but also, fuck, it's good. What is your least favorite game of all time? Need for Speed Most Wanted on the DS. It is unquestionably and undefendably awful. Have you considered doing more for your channel apart from just gaming vids? Yeah, absolutely. I actually have a couple plans for stuff that, um, I guess you'd call it like reactionary content, not in the same way that someone like Jinx would just sit down and watch something, but more like, I don't know, like a fucking parasynical video, I guess, where, he, you know, he, put, he puts clips of a video and he, you know, makes cracks jokes about it and shit. Except mine would be scripted. I don't know if he ever scripted his, but mine would be scripted, yeah. Also, some other stuff. I don't want to turn my channel into like a like an LGBT channel or a furry channel or anything like that. But there is the possibility of uh, sometime in the future doing stuff revolving around that. Like um, Pride Month's coming up, I probably won't actually have time to do anything with it. But maybe I don't know. Next year, I'll do something for Pride Month. Do you have any guilty pleasure games? DJ Max Respect has some of the most awful music you'll have ever heard in any video game ever and yet i still sit there and i play it and i've racked up dozens and dozens of hours between the ps4 and pc versions because i am a fucking buffoon like seriously listen to this and tell me this is good <laughs> Yeah, it's shit, but it's my shit. What makes a good video? Passion and enjoyment. If you make a video and you enjoy doing it and you feel passionate about it, that will come across in the final product and people will enjoy it just as much as you do. And sometimes that's not always easy. Like sometimes you'll be sitting down making a video and you'll think, I really, I don't like this. But usually that's just some stupid voice in the back of your head telling you that you're worse than you actually are and when you upload that video people are going to watch it and they're going to go this is great can we see more and then that'll motivate you to do more and then you'll realize that stupid voice in the back of my head is just a huge cunt and it can just fuck off though on an actual note don't open your videos up like hey what's up guys it's Remy raccoon gaming and today we're playing red Clank 3 <laughs> That's really hard to actually do jokingly, but d d slow the fuck down so I can understand what you're saying, but also do not open your videos up like this either. <clears throat> hey guys, it's Remy Raccoon Gaming, and today we're playing R Ratchet and Clank 3. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> it is genuinely painful how many channels I know that open up like that, and I am just sitting there thinking, please, please, shut the fuck up, play the game, do the review, I don't care, just stop slurring your words like this. <laughs> Why is your name Raccoon, but you're a furry? 
Why is your name Julian, but you're a fucking BMW? Do you like how I walk? Yeah, I get the reference, but also, actual answer, I only like how you walk if you walk like this. <sighs> Sir, please stop calling this number. All you do is breathe into the phone. And finally, <sighs> thank Christ, my ass fucking hurts. Am I in this video? No. Lol, bye. <laughs> And with that, that's another Q&A wrapped up. Um, thank you guys for the questions this time around. I think they were actually really fun questions to talk about. Um, lots of fun questions, lots of very personal questions that, uh, won't lie, it was kind of weirdly, um, elating to talk about. So, um, yeah, thank you guys so much for the, the cool questions. And, um, uh, again, sorry if I had to, like, skip over your question or whatever. Um, you know, a lot of people tend to ask the same question, or maybe it's just not something I'm comfortable answering, or maybe it's just a really fucking bad question, and maybe you should be ashamed of yourself. But otherwise, yeah, um, yeah, thank you guys. Hopefully we can do this again next year, because, I don't know, it's, um, yeah, it's fun, you know? It's fun to just sit down in front of a mic and shoot the shit for uh, however long it's been. I think I've been sitting here for, uh, a cumulative three hours. <laughs> I'm just gonna blast through this because I think my ass is legitimately broken, but um, yeah, okay, uh, thank you to my patrons, including SoFox, K, Damien Maxted, Dalek Boy, Aetheric Ruby, Alice Whitaker Bartlett, He Hoot Skyet, Jayette, Johannes Anderson, Julian Brown, Jazzy Become Android, Kurote the Kitsune, Leo Alex50, Nathaniel Forrest, Pear Basket, Philip Elk, Ratchet Mania, Run Fast S. Smith, Sheepy, The Dervinator, and Travis Miranda. As I always say, without your support, I probably wouldn't be sitting here, you know, talking shit in front of a mic for three hours, so, I really do appreciate your guys' support, not only you guys, but also the rest of my patrons as well, and pretty much just everyone who watches, you know? If you enjoy the video, you know, all the usual shit, like, comment, subscribe, doing all this stuff actually helps a ton at the moment, because YouTube's being its usual, uh, let's not recommend Remy Raccoon's uh, videos, because, I don't know, their videos are awful, apparently. <laughs> And yeah, uh, if you want to keep up with me, you can join our Discord, The Rack Shack, um, uh, follow me on Twitter, I post regular updates there, and by regular I mean I'm literally never off Twitter. <laughs> if you want to send in fan art, you can send it to me on Twitter or at theremiracoon at gmail.com, and I think that's everything. I don't know, I feel like I'm missing something, I don't really care, everything hurts, sitting on carpet for three hours fucking sucks, so yeah, this has been Remy Raccoon, and... Be good, or I'll find you.